So welcome, David. Thank you, Emilio, for coming on. This is the second time you've come on Appy Hour in less than a year, which is amazing. So that's exciting for us. I think this is my third time in general. Maybe my it fourth. Is. Maybe my fourth. So I've been on yeah, Appy Hour a couple more than more than two times. No, two with Melio, but I think once with auto entry and then once just with the uh, intuitive developer. It might have been five times. I might be at five times on Appy Hour. You we could have to go be. and look in this history. Just the record holder, David. It might be. Yeah. I think it might be the record holder. Maybe. So we'll take that a little trophy, an yeah, Appy Hour trophy, the gold Appy Hour cellist. Well, it'll be a shot glass. Yes. Shot glass. <laughs> <It's> a shot glass. <laughs> or a beer mug, right. you know, something, something. All right. So uh, I'll start since my mouth's already running. I'm Heather Satterly, <laughs> and I'm the owner and founder of Satterly Business Solutions, which includes Satterly Training Consulting and Satterly Accounting Services. So I do a lot of stuff with QuickBooks online and related third party applications, um, dip my toe into some other things as well. Um, and I adore technology and streamlining and automation. And so um, I found my bestie in the whole world about three, four years ago and found out that she had the same, the same love of all the things that I love. And so we decided there's got to be more accountants out there that love what we love and hence happy hour was born. That's me. <laughs> well, I feel like that lucky friend. So I am in the, the very same world as Heather, not as cool. <laughs> but I'm having fun. And today I feel like I've been troubleshooting the whole world. So I'm thankful to be here because I feel like I'm taking a break from a lot of those activities today and having a good time talking about some ways to make the experience in QuickBooks Online easier. And there's some different options whenever it comes to helping your clients and even for yourself some bill pay options. So I'm really, really thankful and excited to keep talking about our special guest. And then we also have some help in the background. I, I know that I heard you say, David, that we've got a shout out to, I'm seeing her as Christine, but did you call her Christy? Chrissy, Chrissy. Chrissy, no okay. Yeah. So we've got Chrissy here in the background and she is from Melio. She is an Melio expert. If you've got Melio questions, make sure you're throwing them in chat because Heather and I are going to know from the user side of it, but we're going to probably say, ask Chrissy from the Melio side of it. Yeah. And I'll jump back and forth. I think I already answered a question on the Q and A panel. Let's we'll see if anything comes in through the, uh, the chat as well. So I'll jump awesome. around. Awesome sauce. So, David. Right? Look at that list. I know. <laughs> it's all, I know. I know. So, Where so, do you begin? Yeah. So, I, I, for those of you that, that don't know me, I was at Intuit almost 22 years. I did, I started out doing tech support for the QuickBooks DOS 2.0 product. And I was actually thinking about this the other day. I actually worked retail, like I sold software at the mall. And I remember selling the first versions of QuickBooks when they arrived at the store, like opening them up and selling those to customers. So I pretty much have been touching QuickBooks my whole entire life. Um, the last like six years uh, at Intuit, I spent really building out all those apps that have been an happy hour, right? Like happy hour wouldn't exist if I didn't build out the app store and had apps coming on to the QuickBooks ecosystem. There would be no happy hour. Um, since then, I've opened my own business. Uh, one of the things... Uh, there was kind of a huge learning was one was just um, these things really work. If I think about my career, right, it's, it's all theory. Like it was always fake data and quality assurance, fake data. Even when I was helping apps, it was always fake and test and in theory, like, oh, you can take this data and move it from here and it goes to here and it goes to here and it all magically works. And so I started my own business. I bought business cards. I charged it with my credit card. It was like the first transaction for my business on my debit card, I think it was. And then I got the invoice. I took the invoice or the bill, forwarded it to auto entry, auto entry, scanned it, put it in my QuickBooks, and they just matched each other. And I was jumping up and down in the kitchen. I'm like, this really, really works. But the second big eye-opening thing I had from over my own business is like, I have zero tolerance now when apps mess up my QuickBooks. Before it didn't matter. Like it was all tested. I already did it, but now I have like zero tolerance. So I'd like, I really can emphasize a lot of more empathy for all of you, right? When you have your client's data get screwed up by apps, right? Um, since then, I uh, 
I was at auto entry, left auto entry because um, they got bought by Sage. And I, you know, go from one company into it, giant company to go to another big giant company. And about the time I was discovering uh, Melio for my pot for the pod Cloud County podcast, Melio actually discovered me. And last January, or February or so, right before COVID hit, I joined the Familio at Melio, and that's where we're at today. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. What a, what a journey. I remember the first time I met you, David, was back, I think, in 2016. It might have been sooner than that. It was in, uh, we met in San Antonio at Scaling New Heights. Yeah. Was that 2016? It was a while back. It was, maybe it was 14. I don't know. But anyway, that's where you and I met for the first time. But it's been, uh, it's been a long time. It's, 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 it's awesome. I can't wait till we can all be in the same room again. That'll be great. So cool. So well, I wonder, so I have to ask, does the green jacket still exist? I still have it. It's on its last legs though. I mean, when you buy $12 jackets on Amazon <laughs> from China, they, they only last so long. So it's kind of in a box. The gold jacket's still put away, you know. I still have the QuickBooks swim shorts. That I stuff. Yeah, all that stuff still exists. It's just awesome. some things are not not lasting very well. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Well, Les said that it uh, it was 20, uh, 2014. So that makes sense because tw 2016 it didn't sound like it was long enough. So uh, also huge thank you to ADP, our friends at ADP, uh, and our Champagne Level sponsors for twenty twenty one. Um, we're so excited. We have a lot of really fun stuff coming up with ADP this year, um, including the Accountant Summit, which is going to be on May 9th, May 20th. Um, and we're really excited about that. Um, Magic Johnson is actually the keynote speaker for that event. And then Liz and I get to go right after him. <laughs> <laughs> How do you follow that up? I'm like, <laughs> I, I just want him to join us for that. <laughs> so hopefully all of you could can, can join us. for that. It's going to be awesome. Um, but no, yeah, I really want Magic Johnson. Sure. Yeah, we're doing like an after party, like a virtual after party um, at that event. Prizes. I mean, there's really some cool yeah. prizes. So make sure that you join. Yes. There's, yeah, some legit prizes. Some really, really cool prizes. Yes, you, more you info. Watch social media. You didn't paste the link in. Like this, is, if you're gonna plug things, you have to be like, oh, click we're in the chat. It. There's I, the I'm, link. I'm on it. I got we're it. on it. We are on yeah. it. But yeah, so we're super excited about that. I really, really like. I feel like if all of you guys and us, if we tweet Magic Johnson, we're like, come to the happy hour after party. That maybe he'll show up because that would be really cool. So you think? <laughs> yeah, like that would be amazing, right? <laughs> All right. So, and again, thank you to, uh, to Emilio for coming on the simplest way to pay vendors and contractors. And now I get to show you, um, how I, how our firm is using Emilio and there's a couple of different ways that we use it. Um, and I'm going to be going into this. So this is our agenda and my slide. And I wanted to start out with workflow options. And David and I were actually talking about this yesterday. There's actually a bunch of different workflow options that you can do with Melio, um, depending on what your, your app stack is. These are three that I felt were like the most common. And um, the first two, the first one is, you'll notice like the back of the area uh, of the little arrows are green. We're talking about Melio green. So, um, it starts in QuickBooks. I, our firm uses the QuickBooks receipt capture, which is included in all uh, of the subscription levels of QuickBooks Online. And so we either upload or we forward from email into our clients' QuickBooks Online companies, and then we code the bills there. And then our client schedules the payments and the payment details live in QuickBooks. And one of the things you're going to see um, when I go into the demo is you're going to see that when you use Melio payments, it actually documents every step of the process. So you get this really awesome audit trail that says, hey, you're paying the bill today. It's going to come out of your bank account today. But this is about the time that the money is either going to be transferred to the vendor's account or they're going to receive the check because it does have a little bit of a lag, a little bit of a lead time um, between when you schedule the payment and when the vendor actually gets the money. So the first one that you're seeing is the one that, that our clients use. And we have several clients that pay their own bills. They don't use our bill pay service. So they'll use this workflow and they'll actually schedule their own bills. And what that does is that eliminates the cost of them having to buy checks, um, postage, it's all free. 
I am, that's one of the things that, that we love about Melio is that it's absolutely free. And we have some slides once we, when I, once I hand the baton over to, to David, he'll go through like the different terms and things um, with Melio. And this, this is why I'm green today, because this is what we use. I, I am a big fan of Melio Green. It's just so easy. And, you know, whenever it first came around, it was like, oh, I have to click. I mean, I have to try this out. And then it, it was like, oh my gosh, try this out, try this out. And so I think that it quickly spread that a lot of us are using Melio Green now because it's just so easy. And right. then that, that creates a situation, thank you, that creates a situation where it makes it super easy to go, okay, well, I trust this system and it's very easy to use. Now we can get over into what Heather's gonna be talking about next, where you get into some more complex areas. But my daughter just brought my Melio shirt that is bleach dyed. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I wanted to, awesome. to try something different. And so here it is. Oh, wow, that looks nice. so amazing. Yeah, so I've got my virtual background, so I wanted to be Melio green. So you can't really see it, but yeah, anyway, it looks pretty that cool. That looks great. Oh, it looks amazing. So yeah, so the second workflow option is the one- Heather, before you jump right down to the second one, there's actually sure. possibly even room I could, I could see on this slide for like one even higher. Like you don't yeah. even have to use QBO receipt capture. You could just You're put right. a bill in, mm -hmm. you just put a bill into QuickBooks and hit schedule payment. Yep, and true. that's it. Like it's almost like a two box right. workflow, right? Or, or yep. basically, yeah. And you're a hundred percent. And, and I mean, the thing is, is I'm looking at it from the, the accountant brain, which is like, I need a receipt for everything. Yes, 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 yes. A hundred percent. You know, that a lot of our clients, they don't use the receipt capture. They're like, I have a, whatever, they have it in a folder. I want them to use it, but sometimes they don't. So you're right. It could be a two-step, hundred percent. So, um, so the second one is the one that we offer bill pay service in Saturday accounting services and all of our clients that we pay bills for, we use Melio for. So what we do with that <clears throat> workflow is we use the QBO receipt capture and there's, as you guys may or may not know, and I'm gonna go through this in a minute, is that with the QBO receipt capture, you can upload from uh, Google Drive, you can upload from your computer, you can email receipts into the email, uh, to the email address that you set up for your QuickBooks Online company. And then you can also snap a receipt um, or bill from the mobile app that comes free with all of the paid QuickBooks Online subscriptions. So those are the ways that we get them. We have some clients that, you know, they snap the picture and it goes in and then our team will actually code it. And all of this is done in QuickBooks. So all of the bill entry in our firm happens in QuickBooks. And David, it doesn't have to be done that way. You can actually have the bills go right into Melio as well, right? And have them sync down. Yeah, Melio does do some basic capturing of the bill. You could type it in yep. right? and you can take a photo of it with your phone, but it's very, very basic. So the, the, it's funny that you talked about like your accountant's brain. Right, yep. and and I I actually do a presentation to all our new hires every month. I did one this morning. We are, we mainly just hired twenty new people yesterday. It's a little a little crazy, but I kind of present the difference between the way a small business owner thinks of the bill, and the way an accountant thinks of the bill. Right, and when you got like accounts and bookkeepers, they're thinking about light items, classes, departments, all of these things. We don't do that. And and Purple Melio, we just do. Who's the 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 vendor name and the amount basically in the date, that's it. So any details, anything more you need, and I think QBO receipt captures the same way. It just captures the high level. And then in QuickBooks, if you want the details, you got to put them all in. Yeah, yeah. The, it, yeah, it just added the splits. So when you're adding the bill in, it just, you're right. It just captures and it does the OCR of the date, the amount and the vendor. So it'll match all of that, but you have to add the, you know, the account that you want to use. Um, you have to tell it whether it's a bill or a receipt. Um, so there is a little bit of that. So it, it could be more automated. We're getting, when we get down to the third one, we'll talk about how that you could automate good. it even further. We don't do that yet. So for most of our clients, we're still doing it in QuickBooks. So uh, we code it. Um, and then once the, uh, the bill is, is created in QuickBooks Online, then it automatically syncs over to Melio. And then that's where we're able to schedule the payments and then our client gets an email that says we've scheduled a payment and they have to click approve for those funds to actually get sent to the vendor. So what that does is that protects us, right? Because we're not signing the checks, right? We're just scheduling the payment and then our client has, to, is, has the ultimate responsibility of approving or declining that bill before it goes to the vendor. And then the third one, 
Um, and we're going to talk more about this third tier kind of at the end, all the different ways that you can supercharge this workflow using other apps. But you could have an app like Dext or Auto Entry that's bringing the bills in. And then once it's in QuickBooks, it automatically syncs with Melio Purple, and then you can pay it that way as well. Um, and there's another really cool app that David and I were talking about yesterday that he's going to tell us about that actually adds more complexity to the approval process with Melio. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, you'll learn about that as well. So what I'm going to do, and so oh, go ahead. You, so, and I think you can think about back? some of those app receipt capture apps, right? The reason you want yeah. to use those is like the receipt bank uh, capture or Dext um, auto entry. They're really good at capturing all those line items. So if they you are. need that extra level of detail, you want to use another third-party app and have that flow to QuickBooks then on Emilio. That's right. And yeah, and it is much more automated. You can also set up things like rules and decks. So once you actually code a bill to a particular account, you can set up those rules. QuickBooks doesn't have that yet. Auto so entry is the same thing. I think it right? will, so. but it doesn't have it yet. So if you wanted to get super fancy that way, um, then you would need to, uh, to do that. Now, um, I have to let um, Liz have her little happy giggle about the name of this QuickBooks test company. I see it. I, 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 yeah, of course I love it. Of course I do. And I think that it works out great because beasts are purple and green. Yes. That's the color of the beast. So yep. well yep. done. Okay. I knew you'd like that. Okay. So I'm going to start with the basics of what we do in our firm um, in QuickBooks. And then I'm going to show you the same process with the same bill in the Melio Purple. So what our workflow starts here in the receipt capture. So in the receipt capture, and every QuickBooks Online company has this. So if you haven't used it yet, it's pretty awesome. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to upload receipts either from your computer, from Google Drive, you can forward from email, and you can also use the mobile app to snap a receipt. Okay, so this this is really, we use this for all of our clients, um, except for the ones that are like, oh, I have, I have all my receipts here. I don't want to have to do another step. And some, some of them do that. And, you know, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upload from uh, our downloads folder here. And let's go ahead and grab this bill. And it usually, it can take up to 15 minutes for it to process the bill. I'm going to go ahead and refresh because it usually doesn't take that long. Um, and it, it is processing, so it usually doesn't take that long. It usually should come through right away. The so nice here's my lovely. At least tells you that it's got it. So it, it tells you it has it. And if you if you kind of go, if you kind of like hover over it, it'll show you what the bill looks like. So I'm just going to refresh one more time. Of course, when I did this earlier, because my little my little dress rehearsal by myself, it was um, it was pretty instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So what? <laughs> That's because everybody's if, trying it out right now. Right? Everybody's following. Now along. it's all slow, right? Everybody on right. the webinar just uploaded at the same time. They, exactly. Yeah, it down. I'm going to do it one more time. If it doesn't, then I'm just going to use the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to un undo the ad here, and that's going to throw this one that I already have back into the review tab so that we can move forward with our demonstration. <laughs> I love that you were ready for it. I was ready for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and typically when it comes in, it doesn't know where to put it, and it doesn't know if it's a receipt or a bill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and review it, and you're going to notice that it's going to come in and it's going to you know look for to see if a vendor matches it's going to look to see what the amount is and it's actually scraping that data right off of that pdf so i don't have to enter that it grabbed the bill date it grabbed the due date um, and it even was able to grab the category and the only reason it was able to grab the category was because i had already coded one to uma and so it was able to it learns it's got machine learning going on that's going to you know, help me along as I keep going. So uh, then I'm going to go ahead and put in the bill. I can put in, you know, class, a memo, and this is new. It used to be that you couldn't do a split on these transactions and receipt capture. And guess what happened? Boom. I logged in today and now I can have multiple lines. So, so big if, it's my, if it's my GoDaddy receipt, so it's for my website, but it's also my Office 365 subscription. Yep. Now I can both got it. now you can do both in one in one place i mean when they finally add the rules here this is going to be amazing we don't have it yet 
but Good it's point. gotta be coming. It's gotta be coming. Yeah, you're right. The rules will be nice to have in here. Right. So once I go ahead and I do that, now notice I could also have changed this to a receipt if I wanted to. So when, if it was a receipt, that means that I'm going to have to code it to a bank account or a credit card account, but it's not, it's a bill. We're talking about bills today. Yeah, so I'm going to click save, save it. Oops. And I have to get rid of this, uh, that split. Okay. So I'm going to go save it next. And then it's going to look to see if a bill already exists if in QuickBooks. So if a bill had already been entered for it somehow, it would match it to it. And then when it matched it, it would just add the receipt to that already existing bill or, or receipt. So that's kind of nice too, but it ha doesn't have a bill. So I'm going to go ahead and create that bill. So now the bill has been added and I can click up there to view if I'm fast enough and which I wasn't, was not fast enough to click on that view. So what I'm going to do is just come in here and click on it this way. So there it is, there's my bill. And you can see there's my attachment. And then you're gonna see right up here, it says, hey, you can schedule an online payment. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let it load the bill pay. Now, the first time I do this, you have to sign up for it, right? So you have to add a payment method. Um, and you know, I could add multiple payment methods and this is a good place for us to kind of talk about the pricing. Um, you know, I, if I have this link to my checking account and notice that it's free. So every payment that I make through the QuickBooks bill pay powered by Melio that, um, you know, that I pay via my bank account or a debit card is going to be free. I pay nothing. I pay absolutely nothing. My vendors yeah, don't if pay you're, anything. You can clarify on that. So if you're paying, it depends on how you're, what, how you're paying. Right? right. So the basic money transfers, ACH to ACH or ACH to paper check, that's free. Now, if you want to send it faster, like next day or instant payments, there's fees for that. So there could still be a fee from your checking account. It's not the checking account makes it free. It's the method you're choosing to pay that is what makes it free. Right. Like, and then other methods, if you choose to pay with a credit card, there's a fee for that. Right. Um, but you can support, I have uh, three different checking accounts hooked up. I connected uh, my QBO, my QuickBooks Cash account. I got a Square, uh, Square Cash app. I got the debit card for that. So I put out of those banking routing. I have a personal credit card added. I have a business credit card added. I have virtual credit cards added. So you can support any different ways you need to pay can all be added as payment methods. So you really have a lot of flexibility to solve for each client, right? What their needs right. are and how they want to pay. Exactly. And that's the great thing about it is, is clients do have different meet needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of our clients, they don't want us to pay their bills. They're totally fine doing it themselves or they have an employee that can do it. So they're totally happy with the Melio Green and, you know, we can get this set up. For easy. That's yeah. What they're looking for is they want something that is convenient. They want something. We want something that is located, you know, where we can visually see it. And so that's my thing is I like being able to see all of the pieces and access it in a place that is a platform that all of the other parts are also being um, imported. So yeah. I, I like the fact that you can have multiple different bank accounts because that plays to those clients who have multiple different bank accounts. And since you can have all of those and there's not a charge for it, it makes it very user friendly. Yeah, no, it's it's it it is really user friendly. We have one client that when we brought when we onboarded her, she was she um she runs a fitness studio and she she was um she pays all of her uh, fitness instructors by check. Well, you can imagine they get paid weekly. How many checks we had to enter into QuickBooks and like as you know, as you all know, you know my accounting friends. Entering checks is like the bane of our existence because you can't OCR that information, right? Unless you send it to auto entry and then, and even then they're just doing checks too. I don't think they put the payees in there. Um, it's been a while, so I can't remember that. But so I taught her how to use Melio Green. And I said, not only that, you're just, you're gonna go log into QuickBooks. You no, no longer have to write a check. You don't have to pay for checks. And now all of her contractors, the instructors, they get the auto draft because they put in their information, which I'm about to show you in just a moment, they put in their information on the Melio side. So now that it's just a direct transfer. So they are getting direct deposit, which they love. I don't have to record the checks, which I love. <laughs> and she's, you know, and, and her, her payment, paying her, um, her instructors is so much easier. So it was a win for literally everyone. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to pay with my bank account. I'm gonna click continue. And then I get to choose the day that I want the money to come out, right? So for clients that are, you know, kind of strapped or they're really, really watching their cash flow, this is this this gives them a lot of power, right? If they know that they're getting a big deposit on Friday, they can go ahead and say, okay, take the money out on Friday. And then it will tell you what the estimated payment delivery will be. Now this is estimated. Um, it's a little more accurate in my experience when you're direct depositing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the checks, you're really dependent on um, the mail service because Mealy was actually mailing a check to whoever's receiving the payment. So it could be that you're gonna see a lot more variability when you, when you decide to mail a check. Um, yeah, but I still, you know, what I've done in these situations is I'll, um, capture the image and I'll send it over. So that way, if there's oh, not good a good idea, yeah, that, and, and that way, just, they know the payment's coming. Yeah. It, it's yeah. in the mail checks in the mail. And you can do that in, uh, in the Melio purple, which I'm going to show you in a minute, you can actually send a notification that their check is on the way. So you but can it, actually email the vendor. It's good to note here in green, there's not a notification that comes out from here. That's right. But you can have a workaround. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I can put a memo for the vendor here and that will show up on the check. I can click continue and then it's going to have me review it. So it's going to say who I'm paying. It's going to say when you know when it's actually going to get sent it shows my fee and then i can confirm and schedule the payment okay now what you didn't see here is when i first set up a new vendor and i'm paying them through melio green there's an actual screen and you'll see this if you download the slides there's a screen that actually says how do you want to pay this vendor and I could say check or direct deposit, or there's a third option that says, reach out to them and ask them how they wanna get paid. And then what happens is they get an email that looks like this, that says, Fantastic Beast, uh, Beast would like to pay you $248. Um, how do you want to accept the payment? And then what they would do is they would click on accept payment, a screen would open up and they could choose how they wanna get paid, put in their address and all that other information, which takes, the, uh, you know, the possibility of you fat fingering the wrong thing um, off of you because they're putting in their own information. So I really think that that's a great, a great feature as well. Just makes it easy, right? And um, just reinforcement and, of that, just like we're yeah. starting to see in the data, when you send that off and you give people a, a choice, mm -hmm. right? Do you want ACH or do you want a paper check? I think we're running 70 to 80% now are choosing ACH. Right. So, yeah. so I know a lot of accountants are always like, oh, my client refuses to use ACH. They always want to use paper checks. I think you can really start pushing back on them now. Be like, you don't need to use paper checks. It's, it's time to stop. It like is. Most people, most people are choosing to get the, uh, the ACH because it's faster. It's more reliable. It is like, faster. Who wants to wait for a paper check that God knows where it's going to be, you know, when it's in route. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's, that's what, what the, um, the vendor is going to see. <clears throat> and then all I have to do is click done. Now, what, I'm going to go back to the bill and it's going to show that it's paid and it's going to show that a payment was made. If I click on the link here to go to the bill payment, um, and we'll just ignore that because, you know, this isn't real. <laughs> um, I can view the online payment and it brings me right back to that screen that shows me the process of that payment. So right here, it's saying, hey, to pan schedule, I need the vendor to go in. Um, actually, it's actually me for the approval because um, it's linked to my Melio, but the Melio purple. But it, it would also tell me, it, before I'd set up that approval thing, it would tell me that the, um, the vendor needs to go in and select how they want to get paid as well. Mm -hmm. But notice down here, it's going to show, you know, the payment will be deducted on this date. The vendor's going to receive the payment. And the other really cool thing that you don't see here is that it actually tells you when the payment was deposited. So once they actually cash that check or the money actually transfers into their account, now I'm gonna have a line here that says that it was deposited, which is really cool. I mean, as we accountants, it's like the, you know, the angels are singing for us. Oh, oh it's no. like victory. Yeah. yeah, right. So, and then here, I'm just gonna cancel this payment because this isn't real. And- Fantastic um, Beast isn't really a- your company yeah well i don't really owe uma that money either and i don't really want it to come out of my bank account <laughs> so, so i'm going to cancel it so it's that easy to cancel it right nice. so um 
So that is the Emilio Green workflow. And now I want to show you what it's going to look like when you go into Emilio Purple, because it's different. So in Emilio Purple, um, uh, this is the Emilio Purple, and I can just launch it. A client can launch it from their little apps tab down here, right? Um, and you would you could launch it by going into QuickBooks Online Accountant and then clicking on Launch the App. Or you could just type in Emilio Payments and log in that way. <clears throat> so um, this I'm going to show you in two places. So I'm logged in as the owner, and I'm also logged in on another screen that I'm going to show you as the um, as the accountant. So you'll notice here that a couple of things that I have to do is I have to click on the settings and I have to sync with QuickBooks. And this is something it should sync every day. But with us, like we process payments really on the same time every week. And sometimes bills have been entered. So our best practice when we're using it is that we always hit that sync with QuickBooks button. And then we hit sync now. No, thank you. And it'll go out and it'll grab any, any bills that have been entered since the last sync. And actually, we are connected to the webhooks. So if you create a bill in QuickBooks, in about three to five minutes, you should see it come over to Melio. Mm -hmm. um, for demos, like we're going a little bit faster than that, so it's not demos. But in general, you're probably not going to enter a bill in QuickBooks and go over to Melio, right? You're going to do right. some other stuff, come back, and then they're going to be there. So this should be there. If you ever need to, yes, you can come here and it's sync now. And in theory, this inbox should always match your unpaid bills report in QuickBooks. If That's bills, exactly right. If you pay a bill in QuickBooks some other way, it's mm -hmm. just going to go away from the screen because it, will. it has a zero balance. Why would it show up as a, as a bill to pay? It's exactly right. You also have um, over here. I just also want to show you the manage users. So you can notice he, you can notice here that we have um, Newt Scamander, who is the owner of the Melio account. So that's my client, right? And I am the accountant. And so when um, Newt set me up as the user, and I think I have to get into the other one there. Um, and the way that I actually do it in my, uh, the way I actually do it when I'm setting it up is I add them as, I add the <clears throat> client as a user, then I transfer the ownership to them. And, you know, if you ever have a problem with that, you can get on chat with the Melio Payments team and they'll take care of it, take care of all of this for you right away, which is really great. So in here, when new, see where it says make owner, once I set up mm -hmm. my client, I make them the owner and then I, I, I make myself the accountant. Nice. So if I edit the user, you have three user roles, the admin, the accountant, and the contributor. Contri contributor would be someone like somebody at the client's um, at the client's location that's actually going to be working with you to pay bills. So that's somebody who can enter a bill and this is where you set up the approvals. So for our firm, our amount is always zero because we can't have management responsibility and pay bills, right? So we have it as zero. That means that our client has to approve every single payment that we schedule for them. So you just check the box and I put in zero. If it was a client that had an internal AP person, right, they could give them maybe a thousand dollar limit. Um, you think about nonprofits. I know with um, I'm a treasurer of a nonprofit. That's my limit is I can pay whatever for a thousand bucks. After over a thousand bucks, it has to go to the board for approval. So these are things that you need to be considering when you're setting this up for your clients. And then we just put in my user details and I can go ahead and save. So so Newt is the owner. If I go in and I pay the bill, um, and so this is, I got to figure out who I'm in as. I think, I think this is Newt's because, no, this was mine because I was able to edit it, right? And I can't edit his, right? Yeah, I think, it, I think you are logged in as you. Okay. Heather. Okay. Oh, no, this is Newt's. See, Newt's commander. Where? Okay, so I'm actually going to oh, okay. schedule the payment from the other one. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pay a bill. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay this, this one here. I'm gonna schedule the bill payment. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna pay it on the 30th. The process is exactly the same, no difference here, right? Um, and I can put in my memo and then I'm gonna go ahead, review and confirm. This looks exactly the same as what I saw in QuickBooks in the Melio Green. And I'm gonna go ahead and confirm. So now when I go to go to my dashboard, you can see that it's moved to the schedule tab and it says it's pending approval. So what would happen now is that um, 
Newt Scamander would actually get an email saying, you have to approve this payment. Okay, so he would have to approve the payment. And then when he was ready to approve it, then what he would do is he would go in here and under his, he would get an email that had a link that says click here to approve. He'd log in, he'd see this as pending, and then he could either approve or decline. And if he approved, then it would process the payment. If he declined, then, um, you know, I could put in a reason. Um, uh, I don't want to pay. That's a good reason, right? Don't want to pay. And then you submit and decline, and you'll notice that now it says it was declined. It would go back to me in real time. You just saw that as soon as I switched over, these are in real time. I could go through and reschedule the bill payment. So maybe, you know, I had to change the amount or he had a discount or whatever. I could go through and change this. So that is how that works. Yes, and then what happens is, is now in three to five minutes, it's actually gonna send that bill payment back to QuickBooks. So if I click in here and I go back and I go into the UMA account, then you're gonna see that that bill payment that I just scheduled is right here. And I have duplicates because I was messing around. So you can see that that's there. But if I click on this bill payment, guess what? There's no link here to view it, right? Because all of that payment detail is in Melio Purple. So if I need to see when it was deposited or all that other information, it was gonna go in Melio Purple. The other thing that you don't see here is that I get an email and so do my clients. And so we use filters so that we don't get bombarded with emails is um, we get an email when the money stuff, when the check is cashed or the transfer is made. So we are notified as soon as the vendor cashes that check, which is really cool. Um, what I would say is definitely set up a filter in your email, um, whatever you use, Gmail, Outlook, and then that basically uh, skips the inbox and puts it into a folder so that you don't get bombarded with 10,000, your payment has been deposited or your check has been cashed um, because that will drive you and your clients a little batty. We're, we're working on that. It is, you know, we, we, we send a lot of emails. Um, <laughs> you send a lot of emails. So we're working on that. We're, we're looking to really like give either more controls in Melio or do a summary. Like uh -huh. you, you get a summary once a day or every three hours of like, Here's all the payments and for each client. So we're looking at different ways to manage that email volume. It, it, it's kind of this like fine line because if something goes wrong, you want those emails. But at the same time, if you get too many, you're not going to pay attention to the important one you need to pay attention to. So we're trying to figure out how to swing that pendulum and get that nice perfect balance there. I think that being able to turn like each user being able to control like one user gets them or something or digest would be awesome. Something like that would be awesome, in my, in my humble opinion. So that's that's my demo. Um, I'm pretty sure that everybody's been answering questions. I don't know if you guys flagged any questions for me in the chat or... There have been lots of questions, and I think that David's been answering a ton of them. So he's been talking okay. and able to um, put in a bunch of brief replies because Melia has been been getting a lot of attention and I think that you know a lot of us are using it we're trying it out and so um there's a lot of really good conversation that's happening yeah okay. definitely one repeating one that's came up a couple times because we've only talked about the pay bill side mostly right focus today and one day we're gonna Melio as of right now does have accounts receivable side but it has no integration with QuickBooks as of yet um, it's something we're working on. It will. And then when we do that, guess who's coming back on happy hour to talk about the accounts. Receivable <laughs> more. So uh, unfortunately, um, for the two people to ask, ask those questions about that, we do not have any integration as of yet. It is coming, but you can still use the AR piece without having integration. So everybody that gets Melio on the AR side gets a link to be paid. Like mine is uh, melio.me slash uh, Sunbury Apps Company. Maybe yours is melio.me slash pay Heather. Right? And if I click on that, I'm going to get to a web page. I type in how much I want to pay you. I put in the invoice number and then you get paid. That comes down your bank feed. Then QuickBooks just matches it to the invoice. So even though there's not an integration, you can still send the link and let people pay you through Melio if you'd like. That's still available. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, yeah, so um, this last slide, and then we have to have a drink. 
is um, these are ways that you can supercharge your Amelia workflow. So one is, uh, and this really is, this is directed at the receipt capture. So what makes this work so well for our firm and for our workflow is that we're utilizing that receipt capture functionality in QuickBooks Online with Melio payments. And so it kind of rounds it out, but there's ways that you can actually even further supercharge it. And one is by using filters in your email to automatically forward bills. Okay, so um, sometimes one of the issues that you have when you set up these filters is that a lot of the email clients require that you put an authorization code to filter to an email. And sometimes that doesn't work because there's no place to see the code when they send it to QuickBooks, right? To your company at QuickBooksQBOdocs.com. So <clears throat> what I do in that case is I use Zapier to automatically forward the bill. So I set up a zap that basically says, watch my inbox for an email that matches the search, right? So whether it's the word receipt or it's the word, you know, of coming from a particular vendor. And then what I have it do is I have it connect to my Gmail account. And then the action is send email from the Gmail account. So it's not actually a forward. It's sending a brand new email with that, you know, with that email attached to um, QuickBooks. And that works really well. So Zapier can do that. And honestly, that is a free Zap. You do not need a paid account to do what I just told you to do. So you could go get Zapier and set that workflow up for free. The only thing is you only get five Zaps. So it would work for you know, five clients. Um, the other thing you could do is you could utilize an app to import bills. So there's Dext and Dext is awesome because it has that the rules, right? So you can set up the rules for your bills and then it's gonna push the bill plus the receipt attached to it over to QuickBooks. The bill goes into QuickBooks, it automatically goes into Melio Payments. Now all you're doing is paying it. So that works really well. Um, auto entry has the same functionality. So you can do exactly the same thing. I think the difference between DEX and auto entry is auto entry supports line item um, items, product service items, whereas DEX does not. So if you want to code to, um, product service items, then auto entry is going to be the better bet. For you. Items to classes. Yeah, uh, items to classes. Like, and then having those multiple rules and going to that detailed level for those, those bills. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then David, I have not used Approval Max, um, but can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so Approval Max actually came out of uh, Australian market. So they're very big on zero. Are we going to talk about zero on this for a second? Is this of course. Okay? So, so zero has like a genius field on bills. So zero has a field that says approved or not approved on every bill. So imagine if in QuickBooks you had a bill and it was on the screen, you could have a field that says approved, not approved. So you could toggle it. Like if Liz is paying the bills, Heather, you could have it say not approved. And then Liz would know, okay, I'm not going to pay this yet because it's, it's that five set. So Approval Max has basically built an approval workflow software that utilizes that field in zero. Wow. So what they do, so if you need, you know, everybody has those clients, it's a church or they have a board of directors, right? And they have eight to 10 people that all need to like approve the bill, touch the bill. If the bill is over a hundred dollars, it needs to go to this person and this department and this person has to sign off for it. And just whatever craziness in your brain, you could think of creating rules for, you can do that with approval max. Then at the end of the cycle, when it's time to hit approve, in zero, it'll just flip that little button that says approve. But then what it does on the QuickBooks side, so you basically, you could use Dext, scan the bill, run it through approval max. It does whatever it does. Then once it's approved, it takes the bill, shoves it into QuickBooks, and now you just pay it with Melio. So if you really need complex approvals, and it's not, it's like $30 a month for unlimited clients. So it's oh, wow. not, I, I don't think it's that, or it's, it's just not, it's not that bad of a price. So if you really think about it, if you've got Dext, with approval max and melio you're getting a very powerful accounts payable solution that's highly customizable highly complex for very very cheap versus buying an enterprise level you know package at the office that, that's out there so it's something to take a look at is approval max um, right no no absolutely i think that that's um you can you can get as as detailed as you want by adding on a different additional apps but if you want to keep it simple and this is what I love about it is you can use that QuickBooks receipt capture and Melio and you've got, you're still doing some data entry, right? But it's definitely better than manually keying it in and, and, and you know, and writing paper checks. <laughs> right. Or, or having multiple people log into the bank account. I mean, like that's, that's the thing that, oh, 
I, it makes me so happy to have tools like this because whenever I see different users say, oh, well, I just give so-and-so access to the bank account and they use my credentials to then do bill pay. I'm like, oh man, that's so scary to have lots of different people log in with the same user to go pay bills. So this is definitely a preferred workflow. And Heather, you're doing something down there. You're talking about using tags to indicate client approvals. That's a cool idea for tags. That was, I haven't thought about that. That was David's idea. We talked I about like that, that yesterday. Yeah, that I like that cool. idea too. So do you want to show QuickBooks and show what tags look like? I don't even know oh, if everybody sure, knows yeah. you're there. And while you're doing yeah. that, I'll talk about it. So QuickBooks has added, added tags. And to some extent, it's just a free field. You can use it for whatever you want. And I was thinking like that could be good for approvals, right? You could on any on a bill put a tag that says approved or not yeah. approved or a tag that says pay this week. You have a lot of creativity on that. But I also think from the other direction, it would be nice to put approval uh, tags that could be like, it's been deposited, right? Apps could use those tags. You know, there's a lot of uh, wide open thought process on how you could use, you know, these tags. So this yeah. would be a way, it's not, it's not a control, right? Mm -hmm. But it could help you get a process developed inside your smart clients. Like, hey, put in the approval, right? Pre-approved -pre or approved or hold. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever and, you create, but you can create a small process using these tags. Nice, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, and 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 one of the nice things about tags in QuickBooks Online is when you create these tag groups, only one of the tags in the tag group can be assigned to the transaction, so you don't have to worry about somebody putting you know purchasing approval, control approval on the same transaction. You because they can only pick one. So then it does group. work like a toggle switch. Then it does. That this is the most underrated feature of QuickBooks. <laughs> I think right. that people don't know exactly where to use it because it's so versatile. It's like, it well, is, yeah. what do you do with it? So that's why I, I, I really like that idea. I mm -hmm. think it was a really good use case. Yeah, no, it is a great use case. So um, yeah, no, tags definitely I think could work here. And when they do open it up to the API, it's gonna be pretty amazing because you'll be able to do, especially I, you know, my Zapier brain goes to Zapier is imagine if you can filter on tags or add and remove tags, the possibilities there are kind of staggering on the types of automations that you can create. So very, like, very- You know, what you've talked about Heather inside of Melio, right? It's like, oh, this is pending. It's been sent, yep. the check's yep. been deposited. I would love just to put all those in as tags yes. in the API, yes. right? And just have them, because then if you run a report, you could easily see like, oh, here's all the ones that are marked as deposited. It'd be very yeah. easy to see, they cash the checks and move on. Yep. So definitely one day, but, but yeah. this one actually is not on us, right? We're waiting on QuickBooks. Oh, totally, APIs. totally. This is on the Intuit APIs, yep. Right, well, it's time to raise our toast to Melia. We're a little late on raising our toast, but let's do it. We have the Melio Politan. And uh, it's a uh, fancy smancy. I've got my little cucumber there, but my drink is not showing up because of my green. But I've got my green, my green I, cup. We I am lame drink. and opted into coffee today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of day oh, or cheers. week. Well, I yeah, got the so. cucumber. But my, so I'm all green. So this is definitely an app to be excited about. And I don't know, um, David. I have these slides in that are just slides that you'd given me to me before, but. I think you've been answering questions throughout, but do you want do you want to go through these or? I think um, you could probably skip that slide. It's probably not necessary. Okay. Uh, what's the next one? Was that it? I this was the two slides. I think there was one more, <laughs> okay. and then no, yeah, no. I think that was that okay. was it. So I, I there wasn't the, a whole lot here. Uh, I think the important thing is, is we have a dedicated accountants team dedicated account support. So even if you're in QuickBooks and you haven't signed up for Purple Melio yet, just go to melio.com slash accountants. You can use our chat, talk directly to our accountants team. You can book a demo. You can email our accountants team directly. You have a home at Melio, utilize it because um, everybody on the accountants team is certified in QuickBooks Online. You know, you're, you're not going through the typical standard support channels. You're talking to a dedicated accountants rep, if you want, for lack of a better terms, right? That's dedicated to you, you know, accounts and bookkeepers. The other thing that I would mention, and I can't show it to you guys because I... I have all of my clients on it, but there's an accountant dashboard. So when I log into Melio, I see all of my clients in one place. And it's just like that beautiful little client switcher that we have in QuickBooks Online. I can switch between the different clients when I'm going through and entering bills for them. So I love that too. 
Um, that's a really, really nice feature. It works really well with our team. Um, so yeah, well, I'm, I'm digging it. It's, it's such a great solution for us. And, and, you know, um, I've created a bill pay. Well, I didn't create it. I can't take credit. My operations person created a bill pay template for carbon. And I think if anybody wants it, just send me a message. And I think I can somehow give you that workflow template and you can use it in your own carbon account. Oh, um, well, and there has been a lot of chatter about the AR workflow. And so yeah. I would like to say we would love to have Melio back to show that because it's came up several times and I think it would be worth talking about. I, like I said, when we build an integration to QuickBooks and have a little bit more to show, it makes mm -hmm. sense. Because basically right now, here's what I'm going to show you what I do. I go to the templates in the email and I say, use this link to pay. And I just give them the link. Like, that's it. That, that's all I have so far. So when we have an integration, I'll have actually something to show and we can talk about a little bit more on that side. So when it's all shiny and sparkly and ready to show off, we are Even there. before then, when, when, it's, when, it, when it's still almost there, I will come on. Okay, before awesome. it's done, how about awesome. that? All We're right. all over it. All right. So the, uh, for our coolest thing, um, it just so happened that <laughs> the bill that I pulled up to pay, it really was my UMA bill. And I was like, you know what? That's a really cool app. And so that's what I picked for our coolest thing. Um, Uma is a voiceover IP telephone solution, something like Ring Central, um, Vonage. Um, it's similar to that. And we actually did a uh, an app comparison for our own firm when we were looking. I was already using Uma, um, but I wanted to know that I was using the best service be, as my team was growing. And so we actually did a search and we found, we ended up staying with Uma because it was so, it had all the, these great features that we love. And so what it does is it has a desktop app. It has a mobile app. So my team, it's voice over IP, so it's telephone service. It's got virtual fax and it also has the mobile app. So my, my team has their own, bring your own device, but their telephone number is an app that rings on their cell phone, but they can turn it off. So when they're done working for the day, right? They just turn it off and no, the calls just go to the voicemail. It doesn't ring on their cell phone, but during office hours, it does. And it will tell them when it rings on their phone, it'll say you have an UMA call coming in. And they each have a fax line. So they can also receive faxes because some people still fax. I know it's hard to believe, but some people actually do <laughs> still send faxes. I was asked today for my fax. I know. Address, literally. So, so you can fax. Say, Wait, I have to look it up. Hold on, we have a virtual fax. Yeah, so this is included. The virtual fax is included. You also get a virtual receptionist. You get all kinds of really cool features. Um, one of the things that we're using, and it's not quite perfect, and we're trying to figure out why, is we actually bought an additional line for multi-factor authentication. Um, and what that did mm. for us is that allowed all of us who, sh you know, if we have an account like it, um, paychecks for a client, right? It's under our ID, our, our account, you know, our, our email address, but we have multiple members on the client team. If they need to go in and get reports, it sends an authentication code. So we sent up a virtual, right. a virtual um, number that everybody Message. has access to, and you can also get text messages. So what we've done is we've put that number in there. Now, I will say it hasn't been working for all apps, and I don't know why. Um, some are great. Others, the messages never come through. So I would not tell somebody to go buy this based on that one feature because it's not working 100% for us, and I, I would feel bad. But this is a really great um, app. This is what it looks like inside the dashboard. So I can see all of the phone calls, not just to me, but to my team. So I get all of the call logs. Um, I also get all the fax logs, um, the messaging logs. So you've got some good in internal controls. It does do transcription. Um, it also, you can record your calls. Um, and it, you know, it has the messaging. There's a whole slew, whoops, a whole slew of features. The virtual receptions, I love this. You can set up multiple messages for different times of day. So during the day, if you're busy, it'll say I'm away from my desk or after business hours, it'll say we're closed, call back, whatever. Um, you can have ringtones. There's all kind, different ringtones and things like that. It, there's all kinds of, of cool features there. So um, it's $25 a month per line for the pro, which is what we have. And that gives you the transcription service and, and other things. So, um, which I, in my, my opinion is a pretty good deal. So um, I've been happy with it. Um, and like I said, we, we were, I was using it. And then when we grew, we looked to see if there was something better and this actually was the better product. So we've been really happy with it. 
our special today is Melio is free. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that, right? So um, the only time you're going to pay is if you choose to get paid faster or if you choose to pay your vendors by credit card, then you're going to pay a 2.9% um, uh, charge on that. But as long as you're paying by credit card, debit card, you're not going to pay a thing, which is amazing. So anything else that you want to leave us some parting words, David? Uh, I already said we're going to have AR eventually, right? Yep. We talked about that. We talked about accountants dedicated support. Talked about that. You mentioned the accountants dashboard. Um, I, I think the the other thing I had to take away here is whether or not you're ready, because Melio is built into QuickBooks, your clients are going to be touching, breathing, and using Melio. I say get ahead of them. Sign, go to melio.com slash accountants, sign up, get your dashboard, add all your clients to your dashboard, even if you're not using it with them, just get them all on your dashboard, just connect them to QuickBooks. So that way, if a client does use Melio, you're going to see that reflected on your dashboard. Oh, they're using this now. I better talk to them about it. Instead of it being after the fact where they sign up, they set it up, they don't invite you as the accountant, and then you have a dance to do. So just beat your clients to the punch because it's just there in QuickBooks. And they're just going to click on it because like, that's what clients do, right? They're like, look at this shiny button, right. schedule bill payment, and they just click on it. And so that way you have control, you set it up, you're ahead oh, of the game, okay. add them to the dashboard. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to say, can you, can you share that again? So you're saying go set up the purple and then what's your workflow again? You're saying make sure that you have all your clients set up there. So yeah, you can, you can, using it. you can set up every client on your dashboard. You just connect it to QuickBooks, each client, boom, 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 boom. Then you have your dashboard. You have all 20 clients in your dashboard. You don't have to invite the client as the business owner, right? You just, you're just connecting the pipes. It's tied to you. You're kind of the owner, right? The owner admin of that instance of Melio. And then if anybody in QuickBooks breathes on Melio, they, they click on it, they click that schedule payment button, it's connected already. You're just nice. going to, you're going to see the okay. payment. It's going to appear on your dashboard, et cetera, et cetera. So it just gives you, it, it lets you be in a little bit of control instead of your clients just clicking on stuff and adding apps when you weren't ready for that. I think that was a great tip. Cool. I am going to do our poll. Yes. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch our poll. So would you like someone from Melio Payments to reach out to you? If you would like more information, go ahead and uh, say yes, and I will send over your email to the folks at Melio. If, um, and I'm just going to leave that up for a minute. Um, while I'm talking, because I know we're right at the top of the hour, we're actually a little bit over, um, I'm going to talk through our ending slides, which are please visit our website, theappyhour.com. That's where you're going to be able to view our recorded episodes. You can connect with our sponsors, get the drink recipes um, from the shows, um, read our blog. We, we have blog articles several times a month, um, or you can just send us a message. Uh, and then don't forget to visit Melio Purple. Sign up for Melio Purple. So if you haven't, like, I want you to do that today, right? Go sign up for it because it is just going to make your life better. Um, and then join the Happy Hour Fa uh, Lounge Facebook group and register for Zoom if you're joining us from Facebook. Register for Zoom so you can come in and join the fun. There's lots of Q&A and chat going on in here. Um, and I also see there's lots of chat going on out in Facebook land too. So that's amazing. Um, but if you want to come in and join the party, we would love to have you. And Liz just also... Uh, uh, put the registration link for the ADP summit. So you can go grab that in the chat. And Liz, are you going to post that on um, the Facebook chat too? Sure. I certainly can. Great. What and about then, in person? When are we going to see each other in person? What, so what, I'm what? going to Scaling New Heights. Which I'm going to Scaling New Heights. Melia will be at Scaling New Heights. Okay. Yep. That's the plan. Yep. So yeah, I'm excited to see everybody. I can't wait. I don't know if there's going to be a QuickBooks Connect this year. I, don't, I haven't heard anything. So That'd be fun, but uh, so we have a special uh, episode next Tuesday. We are doing, I know we are uh, usually every two weeks, but we're doing a special episode next Tuesday. It's a deep dive of auto review. And if you haven't seen auto review, we talked about it back in December when we did our apps to watch for 2021. You need to see this. It's amazing. It, it speeds up your time when you're doing a client review and you're, you're ensuring that the data is in good condition. So much, so much to help you um, streamline that process and clean up your client's book. So you don't want to miss that one. Um, then on 5.11, we have uh, Allison 
uh, Bob coming back on with us and Chris from Lysio, they're gonna be on and we have a special surprise guest. We're not telling you, you have to show up to learn about it and we have exciting news in that episode. So um, you definitely don't wanna miss the 511 episode. Um, and then we have the ADP accounting conference on the 20th, and then we're going to have our friends at Live Plan back with us on the 27th. So we've got a lot of really awesome uh, episodes coming up, and um, we're really excited about it. So, all right, I'm going to close that poll. We got a lot of responses. Fantastic. And I'm going to put up our, oops, and I just, uh, our thank you slide. So thank you to David. Thank you so much for joining us. We love Thanks having, having me. you on. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, and thank you to Emilio and thank you to our awesome partners at ADP as well. And thank you to you, Liz, and all of you that joined us today. It was great seeing all my friends. See you all it soon. Bye, all everybody. right, bye everybody. Bye.